I'm Ros Ford, I work as a farrier in Devon, um, which means I basically do the care of horses' feet, whether they're trimmed or shod. So I would shake the shoes, put the shoes on, and just make sure the general care of the horse's foot is where it should be. It's a pretty physical job. I'm handling horses every day, whether they're little Shetlands or big Clydesdales. Um, no horse is ever the same. Some lean on you, so you've got to be a bit stronger for that. You're lifting heavy things in and out of the van all, every day. So yeah, you've got to be pretty fit and physical for the job. I was involved with the care of Roz's aunt when I was a junior doctor and her story is very different from that of Roz. So she originally triggered with the disease when she was 17 and was on dialysis then. She had two transplants, both of which ultimately failed. Uh, she became unable to work because she was too unwell on dialysis and she ultimately died from complications related to her peritoneal dialysis when she was 39. Roz was doing part of her farrier's training in Hertfordshire when she became unwell. Because she was carrying an alert card uh, that identified her as carrying a mutation causing atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome, she had all the appropriate investigations done in the emergency department and in fact the consultant rang me uh, as soon as they got the results for my advice. I was able to contact the team in Newcastle to allow the treatment to be released to her to make sure that she had the first dose of treatment on the same day that she presented with the active disease. The damage happens very quickly, the damage happens to the kidneys and to other organs very quickly so we know it's important to get the treatment into the patients as soon as we can. We and our colleagues found that the majority of patients with this disease had abnormalities in the genes of a, a pathway called complement. And we found that really overactivity of a complement pathway was a major factor in the way the disease developed. So it seemed logical to look for a treatment that involved a drug that might decrease the complement pathway's activity. And there was such a drug called Clusimab. And with colleagues around the world, we undertook a multi-center trial in which we were able to show that the drug was extremely effective in treating this disease. Finding a drug that was effective in treating the disease was fantastic because it meant that not only could we use it to treat people who develop the disease for the first time and prevent them, going into end-stage renal failure and needing dialysis, but for the most many patients who were already on dialysis as a result of the disease and who felt they would never get a transplant, it was possible to offer them a hope that they could get a transplant with the Clusmab cover for the transplant. As a doctor, one of the most gratifying things was the fact that the patients who had donated the samples to us actually got to benefit from it in their own lifetime. This is a classic example of how you turn bench research into bedside research. Within about 15 years from the initial discovery, we were treating patients and stopping kidney failure. Although ecolizumab has revolutionised the treatment of AHUS, we don't yet have all the answers. Some people don't respond to ecolizumab and I'm looking to identify new genetic causes of AHUS and repeat the translational benefits that the team in Newcastle have already seen in terms of developing new drugs to target those particular pathways. I saw members of this family die from this condition. Now I'm treating the members of the family with effective treatment and seeing them restored to being able to work and live a normal life and that has been one of the most satisfying parts of my professional career. There were moments when I was in hospital um, that, yeah, I didn't think that I was going to be coming out alive kind of thing. Um, in the back of my mind, I obviously had my auntie's situation in my head, so obviously she didn't make it. Yeah, it was a pretty, pretty low moment, I would have said. To all the researchers, I'd like to say a massive thank you to, because basically, if they hadn't done the work that they've done, I wouldn't have the job and the lifestyle that I've got now. Um, and I feel, yeah, completely normal now, considering everything that's happened. The main message from AHUS research has been that collaboration works. 
from the patients that initially gave us the samples to do the research, to all the researchers in Newcastle and worldwide who found the cause for this and then did the clinical trials, to the patients and their families who helped us to go to NICE to get this funded so that patients could benefit from Eclizumab to prevent kidney failure. This story has shown us that undertaking research into families where more than one member has been affected and using the genetic information is absolutely crucial in understanding the diseases and giving you a clue as to what pathways might be involved and in the future what treatments might be effective. The research that started small in the 1990 has had a really big impact on people's lives and I, and I think that's what's important for people to see is that our research just isn't nebulous and academic, that it's, it's, it's transformative, it's changing people's lives. And you know, it's just been such a pleasure to work with patients, families, colleagues all around the world in making a difference. And I really do feel this research has made a difference.